Hello everyone. So this is Prem from Department of Food Technology. So today we'll discuss on spectroscopic techniques in food. So there are many different analytical methods are available to get the information about food components, okay? The food materials are in the food analysis. So many quality control laboratories they are using the food analysis okay so means uh, many analytical instrument techniques they will be having so in this many the chromatography techniques or electrophoretic techniques and spectroscopic techniques so comparing to the electrophoretic techniques and chromatography techniques so spectroscopic techniques are most widely used because of its simplicity and it's economically it's feasible and also highly precise and accurate in nature so mostly we can obtain the information in the two ways by using the spectroscopic methods that is qualitative information and the quantitative information of the food components so mostly here we are passing the light okay spectroscopy will deals with the passing number the light at particular wavelength so during the absorption or emission or diffraction or refraction so that data is obtained it's recorded and it is analyzed by using some mathematical statistical techniques to receive the required information so here the various spectroscopic methods in food analysis so which is mostly categorized into the nature of species they analyze either the you are going to analyze the atomic level or you are going to analyze the molecular level or or the interaction just an interaction of the light with the sample okay so here we know the electromagnetic radiation okay so we electromagnetic radiation here we can see in this image so in this electromagnetic radiation so you see a different different wavelength regions are given so according to the particular wavelength or particular region it is given by a name okay so that is ultraviolet rays x rays gamma rays infrared rays and visible light region okay so most of the spectroscopic techniques are using this ultraviolet rays that is a uv and visible okay so we can know that we can hear the name that is uv visible spectroscopy okay so mostly that spectroscopy that particular analytical instrument uses this two electromagnetic radiation okay so other radiations also employed another the most used on another wavelength is that is the infrared rays so before entering into the spectroscopy so we will discuss something about the basic principles of the spectroscopy so as uh, uh, we have to know this uh, information before uh, what exactly happening in the spectroscopy okay so we will see first the properties of light okay so mostly we are using the light as a source okay so for analyzing the food components using the spectrometry okay so light is usually it is an electromagnetic radiation right so light can be available in two forms that is one is a particle form and another one is wave form okay so the particle the small particles will carry some amount of light that is called as photons and also the light light exists as a waves when it is emitted from the electromagnetic radiation okay so this dual characteristic of the light is used mostly in the analysis or in the uh, experiments with the spectroscopy okay so particle nature of the light will always give the absorption and emission type of the information and wave like nature of the light it will give the refraction diffraction and reflection of information of the components whatever we are analyzing so the source is needed the light source okay so we can use a light source from different different uh, uh, sources okay so that is uh, mostly we know that sodium vapor lamp and also the xenon lamp halogen lamps okay so mostly the inner gases we are using okay argon oak lamp okay so whatever the source we are using so according to the source the energy produced okay so the radiation which emits by that particular source also varies and also the frequencies also will get vary okay so this distribution of this wavelengths and frequencies of electromagnetic waves is also called the electromagnetic spectrum okay so the next important topic is the properties of matter okay so in the previous slide we have discussed uh, uh, about light okay so here we are discussing about the particles that is a matter so that is atoms and molecules okay so this atoms and molecules okay so when you pass this light on to the atoms and molecules okay so it will also absorb some amount of the energy okay so 
atoms and molecules which absorbs the energy so the, it carries the energy okay so it holds some energy okay so that is called as quantum okay so photon is different and quantum is different okay so at ground state okay so before absorption of the energy all molecules and atoms will be in the ground state so when they expose it to the energy level it will gain some energy and rise to an excited state okay so in excited state the first atoms will go to the electronic level okay so that is just above the ground level okay so then molecules are the very uh, so size is very uh, big when comparing to the atoms okay so it will absorb more amount of energy it will go beyond the electronic energy that is the rotational and vibrational okay so it will go some molecules will stay in electronic energy also so this both absorption and emission spectroscopy is uh, is recorded and it should be utilized to identify the unknown components also so for example if there is uh, any uh, protein or amino acid so mostly it will be emitting or it will be uh, absorbs the light energy at particular 560 nanometer means the 560 nanometer is given for that particular Thing, okay so when you don't know what is actually present in the sample so when you expose that particular sample in this particular wavelength so okay it when the absorption maximum is obtained as a p okay so we can conclude that so it is a but uh, that particular uh, amino acid okay so like this the information is gathered and the recorded and we can identify the unknown components in the mixed solutions or the mixed samples okay so when all molecules and atoms are absorb the energy it will not stay uh, as so much of time in the excited level okay so once it reach to the ground state okay so when absorption and reaching the excited and coming back to the ground level so this process is called the relaxation so during relaxation the absorbed energy is emitted in the form of emission okay so this uh, nature of this information is gathered by the foot spectroscopy to analyze the uh molecules okay so thank you so here we'll stop today so next class we will discuss on the uh, instrumentation part and the principles thank you